Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm back with another RuneScape fact video. Uh, there's just so much to learn about this game, so many easter eggs, so many fun facts that I can continue to make these videos just because there's so much information out there. So today I'm going to be going over interesting things about old school RuneScape that you may not know about even if you play the game a lot. Often these are going to be little easter eggs within the game, occasionally they may even be useful tips, who knows. But anyway guys, if you have any interesting easter eggs that you know about the game that you want to share, I would appreciate it if you left a comment with it down below. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Now first up here I want to talk a bit about the wise old man. This guy is featured in a lot of parts of RuneScape, but what I really want to talk about is his task system. Not many people end up actually helping the wise old man, and there's actually some interesting rewards that you can get for helping him, as well as a very long list of items he requires. Honestly, so few people actually do this content that the actual wiki is giving away bonds to help fill in this information. So the wise old man can assign various tasks on a member's world. He assigns easy task items as well as hard task items. Uh, most of them are pretty easy to get regardless. And some of his requests actually require you to deliver letters to different NPCs. However, every time you do that, you get a reward. Now, most of the rewards are pretty generic. You can get coins, gems, runes, herbs, and seeds mostly. However, most notably, he actually uh, rewards you with prayer experience sometimes. About half the time you will get prayer experience, somewhere between 180 and 400 prayer experience per task, and even occasionally you will get hit points experience. Now I'm not really sure if there's a crazy pure build that would ever use this information, but I thought it was interesting. One thing I've always kind of wondered about is uh, that random boot that is at Mud Scooper Point. Uh, does it have a purpose? I didn't really think so, I just picked it up a few times. However, for those people who are observant, uh, so clearly not me, you may have noticed that Skippy is actually missing a shoe. So if you go ahead and try to help him out and bring the boot back to him, it'll actually result in a different conversation. After you've given him the boot, he will say, thanks, I now have two right boots. So I guess he didn't really help him that much. And the boot will appear back where it belongs. Now all of the party hats have a pretty interesting history behind them, but one more specifically is the green party hat. Notably, it was worn by Durio321, during the Falador Massacre, and there was a really interesting throwback to that during an event in 2016. In Falador, green party hats were spawned everywhere, and when you actually tried to pick them up, you got a ghostly vision of Duriel laughing at you. Now in the southern section of Maria Ditch is where the Theater of Blood is located, and the actual area is called Versinhaza. Well, apparently that is actually Hungarian, and it translates pretty much directly to Theater of Blood. Now, for whatever reason, there are actually a few monsters in the game that will follow you through a fairy ring when you teleport. Uh, one of those monsters is the Jackal. It's a very rare occurrence, but if the Jackal is on the exact tile that the fairy ring is on, as you teleport, it will come through with you, which is a very weird interaction because it doesn't work with every monster. Now, apparently this also works with vampires as well, and it kind of begs the question, uh, is this maybe worth fixing? Because if you can get uh, more dangerous monsters through the fairy ring teleport, uh, who knows what you could actually do. Now, it's a pretty rare occurrence, so it hasn't really been tested that much, but I think mostly they come through to Zenaris. I'm not sure if you could teleport to a more benign area with a vampire behind you or something like that. Now there's a really fun little easter egg on Fossil Island and it is a tribute to Mod Maz, who was the main dev of the Fossil Island update. I think Mod Maz has left Jagex, hard to keep track of how many people have left it nowadays. But there is an easter egg or a tribute on Fossil Island if you go ahead and look around hard enough. Now there's a squirrel uh, called Maz that is located somewhere around the volcano area. And if you have an acorn in your inventory and use it on the squirrel, uh, the squirrel will actually follow you around indefinitely. It will also eat your acorn as well. So bring multiple if you want to keep that squirrel. This is kind of a cool easter egg because you could realistically pretend that you own a pet and just nobody knows what it is. And I think this is a really awesome way to commemorate someone who put a lot of work into the game. Just little things like this that really give life to RuneScape. Now there are quite a few unobtainable items in old school RuneScape for a multitude of reasons, either they are Jagex moderator tools, items that were discontinued, 
or items that were never implemented into the game. Now one really interesting relic that people have found in the RuneScape cache files is a telekinetic grab tablet. So similar to a teleport tablet, it would be a tablet except for the telekinetic grab spell. So for people who didn't have a high enough magic level to cast telegrab, you could just go ahead and get one of these tablets. I am not really sure why it was never implemented into the game, but I'm assuming that having that spell unlocked could uh, lower the requirements of certain quests or events and stuff like that, so I think they probably decided against it. Now with the new Forthos dungeon update, there's actually quite a few easter eggs put into the game. One of the more interesting ones is that if you go to the Altar of the Sun and you bring a Ring of Visibility, you'll actually be able to see the Shaded Beast that you have to fight. Now this is all part of the mini quest to obtain the Temple Coin, but normally you don't really see what you are fighting. And on top of that, if you talk to the Shaded Beast, he'll actually give you a speech from Dragon Ball Z. Now when the Archaeus Library was released, the training method there was actually very overpowered, mainly for runecrafting experience, and it was subsequently nerfed after the first day. Now the reason it was so strong is because so many people are actually doing it at once, and the locations of the books uh, were very obvious, and people were actually planting mithril seeds to mark where certain books were. Now because this kind of became a group activity, the experience rates were much higher than what was designed. So the runecrafting experience was almost nerfed to be three times less. And even today the method is still quite good, even though there aren't a lot of people doing it at once, there are plugins now that can tell you pretty much exactly where to go. As the library doesn't rely on underlying randomness, there are some systems behind it. And last appear during the recent Halloween event, there is a bit of an easter egg when the kind of spoof character Mad Melvin 96 comes. If when he's on your screen you manage to examine him, it'll say, watch out, he's an absolute unit, which is clearly meant to be making fun of his gear, and most definitely a meme that was put into the event. All in good fun though. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Those are 10 interesting facts or easter eggs about old school RuneScape. Again, if you have any more, definitely let me know. I'm always keen to learn more. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.